Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss the classification of uh, lung tumor. Uh, different uh, pathogenesis, etiologies, morphology, and the diagnosis of the lung tumors. In the world, the most commonest tumor in the males are prostate, while the most commonest tumor in the females are breast cancers. The second most com commonest tumor in both genders are the almost lungs. Very interestingly, the lung tumors are uh, decreasing, the prevalence is decreasing in females, in males, while increasing in the males, in, in the females. We do not know what is the cause, maybe due to some change in the habitual patterns of both genders. And the third most commonest tumors in both genders are described in the literature is the colorectal carcinoma, but hepatocellular carcinoma is increasing day by day due to the prevalence of hepatitis C in the world. But among these all tumors, the most aggressive tumor, the, the tumor with poor prognosis in both genders is lung cancer. Very, very interestingly among these all tumors, we can control lung tumor if we control the etiology. Let's see certain slides about the today's lecture. And mainly, uh, I will classify the tumors on the basis of clinical aspect and some new updates in the classification of the WHO. I will also update uh, the different etiologies in Pakistan and in the words. Uh, the lung tumor most commonest uh, age is almost uh, uh, above 40 and uh, almost up to 70 years. So this is the beautiful way, view of Azad Jammu Kashmir Medical College and behind the beautiful weather uh, hovering over the beautiful mountains, uh, not less than the heaven on the earth. This is the picture of the crab. This crab is showing that the cancer, how it spreads. And clinically, we divide into two groups, small cell carcinoma and the large cell carcinoma. And uh, the same uh, uh, non-small cell carcinoma, we divide into squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma and uh, large cell carcinoma. This is clinical classification. Uh, but certain new updates in the WHO new updates about the adenocarcinoma, some new terminologies and some older terminologies are obsolete uh, for the students 
you should know at least the terminologies. But you must read these all things when you are going to do the post graduations. This is all the list of the adenocarcinoma, mucinous, not mucinous. And squamous carcinoma, keratinizing, non keratinizing, basalite, invasive, minimal invasive, invasive, neuroendocrine tumors, certain tumors arising from the salivary glands, certain tumors and tumor like conditions are present in the lungs. We all know there are two lungs and uh, these two lungs are connected through uh, this trachea that divides into uh, right and left bronchi and then bronchioles and then at least in the alveoli. The main function of the lungs, you students know that uh, for the exchange of the uh, this uh, oxygen in carbon dioxide gas, but also certain uh, endocrine functions of the lungs is very important. You have already seen about the ACE enzyme. Uh, as I told you earlier that the New cancers, yearly cancers is 236,740 almost. The incidence is rising in the males, in the females, while the overall incidence is decreasing. And if you see among this almost 50% of the people try. That is why I told you all that this wine, this tumor is the most dangerous, aggressive, with poor prognosis. One of the most important theology is the smoking, smoking, and smoking. In the some literature, it is about 80% of the. It does not need that every smoker develop the cancer, but almost 60 to 90% uh, cancers are associated with the tobacco. And uh, 10 to 20% other causes that I will enlist. Generally, the cancer basically is due to uh, when uh, the, there is loss of the immunity. And uh, immunity depends upon your proper diet. These are the five diets which can enhance the process of cell cycle and the process of cancer. While on the other hand, there are certain foods which can decrease uh, the chances of proliferation of the cells, mutation of the DNA that enhance the immunity. Immunity is, immunity is the only important tool that can save you from the cancer. So one important message is in all cancers, when we change the, our natural living system, when we change our natural way of uh, food that results in the cancers. So one, I, one by one, I will discuss the secret. Smoking is the number one. Then uranium mines, radon gas, asbestosis. Mostly the asbestosis is responsible for the mesothelioma. Coal dust mines, no doubt, the this uh, industry is uh, uh, no uh, is uh, uh, decreasing uh, 
uh, but still uh, uh, some tumors are associated with the coal dust. Industrial uh, smoke is also responsible. Industrial pollution. I do not think uh, from the last 10 years we are uh, facing smoke. And uh, I think uh, after some year, 20 to 30 years, I think uh, this smoke will be responsible for causing the carcinoma, irradiation, ionization, use of the mobiles, use of the laptops, use of these all things. I think uh, not only the X-rays, ultrasound, MRI, CT scans, uh, these all, sh there should be, uh, when, uh, you, when, sh when you use these all things, you should keep all these things away and wear some protective uh, dress, especially when uh, going for the diagnostic test of the radiation. Uranium air pollution, uh, one of the most important air pollution is now smoke, dust, industrial hazards. And uh, uh, we are looking that day by day the our trees are decreasing due to more uh, increasing the population, especially in the Pakistan and the people are more going towards the uh, cities and the cities are enlarging and they are uh, destroying the natural beauty of the nature, beauty of the nature. They are, they are causing the air pollution. Uranium, some metals, tuberculosis scar especially, but I will say that uh, in this pandemic, uh, the corona was responsible for causing the fibrosis and the scars. I do not think of some 20 to 30 years, there may be some adenocarcinoma, they may be responsible for the adenocarcinoma, something silica and so. So these are the, but the number one uh, most important cause is the so what is the pathogenesis? Pathogenesis is really, especially these etiologies, as I told, smoking, I will discuss. Smoking, uh, uh, in the smoke, they contain so many chemical carcinogens. These chemicals are when inhaled, they affect on the uh, nuclear uh, material, nuclear box, the nuclear box contains our DNA. So our, they affect our cell cycle. Our cell cycle is controlled by two important uh, genes and the oncogenes and the tumor suppressor gene. And our health means by the balance of these two genes. So these all etiological agents that we have discussed in previous slides are responsible for enhancing the oncogenes, especially the KRAS, MIC family, BCL2, HER2, and epithelial growth factors, receptors. When these are overexpressed, when their function is enhanced due to the mutation of the, our genes, the cell cycles becomes rapid, and more and more cell, 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 cells are produced in the lungs and this causes the carcinoma. Another thing is that if some of the tumor suppressor genes are suppressed, E53, P63, P22, P16, RB1, they will also results in uh, carcinoma of the lungs. Um, this, uh, we'll discuss uh, the commonest site of the metastasis of the lung tumor, usually in the staging, but the commonest site is have a high region and then adrenals, liver, brains, bones. Uh, when I was uh, classifying the tumor, the 
tumors of the lungs are uh, primary tumors and the secondary tumors. The primary tumors arise, arise from the cells or the tissue of the lungs, while the secondary tumors are metastasizing tumor, which can come from any site, especially the breast tumors, the bone tumors, can rapidly spread to the lungs. Uh, these are the molecular genetic effects. This is the summary uh, of the adenocarcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, mild cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, bronchoalveolar carcinoma, noitous cards, the different name, lipidic carcinoma, this one. Uh, how it, uh, the cells, normal cells, becomes malignant cells. Whenever the etiological factor affects in our keras, oncogenes, or tumor suppressor genes are affected, the normal cells shows metaplastic change. Metaplastic change, if the still uh, these etiologies persist, continuing the mutation in the genes, the metaplastic cells, which are normally normal ciliated columnar epithelial cells becomes squamous cell and then the squamous cells becomes dysplastic cells. Dysplastic cell then, when whole thickness of these cells are in, become malignant, but the, still the base membrane is intact, it is called carcinoma in situ, either the squamous cell carcinoma or any other carcinoma. But when the, this uh, basement membrane is broken and the cancer cell starts invading the stromal area, then it is called infiltrating, maybe minimally invasive. And when it is two to five millimeter and the overtly, this is the process of this change in the malignance. So this slide shows that uh, the cancer is not the result of one day. One thing, the second thing, the message of this slide is that if you uh, remove the etiology before it becomes malignant, you can control the cancer. Let's see some different few things about the adenocarcinoma, more common in the female as compared to the males and less closely associated with the smoking as compared to the squamous cell carcinoma and the small cell carcinoma. Crossly, if we see this, are present in the uh, peripheral gray whites. It's, they are not central areas of the lungs. They are present away from the lungs, different areas of the lungs. And towards the pleural sites, and they cause rural puckering, if we see on the grossly, may develop area of parenchymal scoring sometimes when we take the biopsy and look under the microscope, the tumors form the glands, they can be, there can be well differentiated, moderately differentiated and the poorly differentiated the adenocarcinoma may be, as we have discussed in the classification, may be mucin producing or non mucin producing. There are so many other subsets of the adenocarcinoma. So, very important message is that it is present in the more common, the female, less associated with smoking, and present at the periphery. And uh, 
the prognosis is uh, bad when it is uh, poorly differentiated and spread in the higher region, uh, the higher region when the size is more than three centimeter. Now let's see a few things about the squamous carcinoma more common in the males, also strongly associated with the smoking, and they are present in the central higher regions from the trachea when it divides in the bronchi, they present in the higher region where it's called the central place. Same process we have discussed step by step, it changes from metaplasia to dysplasia, carcinoma, C2 to, to the carcinoma, invasive carcinoma. Uh, all the tumors, especially the squamous cell carcinoma, are well differentiated, moderately differentiated, poorly differentiated, could be creatinizing and non creatinizing. Well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma are usually associated with the keratin production and presence of the intercellular bridges because this is a feature of squamous cells. Adjacent cells, subtype includes basal diet, clear cell, papillary, small cells. This is this small cell, non creatinizing squamous cell is different from the small cell neurodecrine tumors. Another creates. It's moderately spread when you cannot identify all the cells uh, producing these all features that I have discussed in the well differentiated, poorly differentiated cell. You cannot find any keratin pearls, you cannot find any bridges, you cannot find um, cells of regions, the cells become larger, nuclei become more than one. There are so many mitotic activities and something else. Uh, this is uh, the cross areas, hemorrhagic, large mass, this black showing the hemorrhages, and uh, uh, solid areas are there. And replacing and expressing the normal, compressing the normal tissue of the lungs. No alveoli, that's why pressing. On the other side, if you see, this is the keratin pearls. On this side, you can find this intercellular bridges. This, this is, in this way, the cells are larger. This is the mitotic activity. And if you see mitosis there, our large cells are larger, tate pole cell, black nuclei, larger nuclei. These are very important when you take the biopsy or the cytology lungs, bronchial washing, you will see here. So when you take the bronchial washing for the diagnostic purpose, you can see few types of the cell, tate pole cells like this. Certain cells are ink drop cells, a larger tate pole, larger pole, larger this uh, tail of the cells. This. So two important things the students know that on the cytology, they look state pole like they look ink dot type, they look racket shapes, they look like pleomorphic cells. On this way, these are the central area. This is the trachea, this is the Uh, uh, right side of this because this is the left side after this is the horizontal this is almost vertical this is the larger mass whitish mass of this one so the students can get such pictures in their auspice and to describe two points two important points uh, of this cross or this microscopic pictures. So this is the squamous uh, uh, cell carcinoma and this is the adenocarcinoma. This is the small cell carcinoma and this is the large cell carcinoma that we'll discuss that one by one. Uh, very simply, it's non-small cell carcinoma, the small cell carcinoma we have discussed already 
This is present the peripheral areas generally. About 35 to 38% is common as tumors. This, these are the larger cells, these are glands. And on the other hand, I will uh, discuss again the small cell carcinoma. Uh, this is includes the non-small cell carcinoma and repeated mild carcinoma. I have discussed in detail in the last previous slides. Adenocarcinoma, the most common 25 to 35 to 38 percent of the glands arise from the bronchioles, even can arise from the alveoli, slow growing, rarely cavity, strongly linked, um, less strongly linked to the smoking. But one of my uh, friend was in the America was telling me that why it is increasing in the American females because of their habit of taking the smoke and ice in the smokes. Large cell carcinoma, about 20% cavitations commonly this present in the central area and the peripheral area and they where the neuroendocrine cells are there. They are here. Slowly metastasis may occur in the kidney, liver, and milk glands, may be associated centrally, mid lung glands on the peripheral, notch and aplastic cells on the microscopy without differentiation of this one. Uh, adenocarcinoma, which marker as by the TTF1, we use these markers to identify either it is adenocarcinoma or not adenocarcinoma. So, uh, TTF ACA2 carotene is, is called CK7, beta catenine, napsine A, and the negative immunomarkers, but these are present positive in the squamous cell carcinoma P53, P63, P21, P16. P. Most of the people say the squamous cells are due to. Um, Imbalance in the tumor suppressor gene while the adenocarcinoma is imbalanced due to the oncogenes. Um, this is association of the adenocarcinoma with mutation of these uh, oncogenes mostly and uh, some scammer, uh, tumor suppressor genes may be associated. These are the things that use molecular markers to differentiate the adenocarcinoma of the mothers. What new advances have made in the adenocarcinoma of the lens? I have told you adenocarcinoma in situ. They have been minimally invasive adenocarcinoma and a uh, few other terminologies um, uh, are uh, new uh, introduced included in this new classification of the WHO. Small cell carcinoma, very poor prognosis, arises periphery in the lungs, more in the males, as compared to the females, about 25% to 20% to 25%, mostly associated with the smoker. This is, this is you can see here on the grocery, you can see. As I, as I told you, they arise they are from the neuroendocrine cells present here. While squamous cell carcinoma arise inside the bronchia, bronchus, they, they arise from outside the bronchus here, but they invade the tumor by and the lung mass. This is the large cells. Uh, Carcinoma, this is small. Large cell carcinoma arises from the neuroendocrine cells. Um, we have already discussed um, the spread of the tumor. We will uh, wear spreads and uh, through the distance, first lymph nodes. But another important question is that these tumors are associated with pancos tumor, atypical tumor. 
causing the Horner syndromes because they involve the superior vena cava and the first rib. So many structures, brachial plexus, and the uh, blood vessels, nerves are passing through it. They will suppress the superior vena cava syndrome, obstruction of the superior vena cava. Um, and distended head and neck veins, even like this, plethora, facial and upper arms, edema due to this tumor. Esophageal obstruction that causes the dysphagia, recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement causes the hoarseness and the phrenic nerve derangement. This these are the, all the symptoms of superior men. This is called pancos tumor. These uh, tumors are these are associated with extra thoracic metastatic adrenal liver spawns, and they are responsible for the paraneoplastic syndrome. Pancast tumor, they are called superior vena cava syndrome. This also another is the syndrome that associated with this is the pancast tumor. This is due to the release of ectopic ACTH, not from the adrenal glands, but from the tumor cells, causes the Cushing syndrome, ADH. This syndrome, SIADH, parathyroid hormones are responsible for the hyper calcemia, especially squamous cell carcinoma and small cell carcinoma as compared to the adenocarcinoma. Aten Lambert syndrome are also due to this uh, to these tumors, acanthosis, necrogens, pigmentation. This is called on the change. Hypertrophic pulmonary osteotrophy, maybe some uh, uh, broken bones. You can see neck, pelvic neck. You can see the fracture of the bones. The treatment of the non-small cell trunk carcinoma, almost surgery. The small cell carcinoma is an adenocarcinoma. They are the uh, chemotherapy centers. Prognosis is very poor as well. Five years survival is less than 10% of this one. Certain other tumors that we have discussed, metastatic tumors, can also, these are the certain very important MCQ questions, which are the hormones responsible for ADH, hyponatremia, ACTH, Cushing syndrome, Parathyroid hormones, hyperplasia, gastrotonin, these all are the hormones. Sign symptoms are different depending on the stage of the tumor, the size of the tumors, or the type of the tumors. But very important thing is the cuff, sputum, spit with belgium, chest pain is often worse with deep breathing. Coughing or laughing when you coughing with the bloods. Very important thing when you cough full with sputum with blood, it is due to the carcinoma. When you cough full with mucus, it is due to some infection, bronchitis, or something else. When you cough, when the patient coughs, Sputum full with pus, it is bronchiectasis, lung abscess. So these are the things students can differentiate on the history uh, from the patients that the patients coughing and sputum is very important. This causes the hoarseness, weight loss, loss of appetite, shortness of breath, feeling of tiredness is very important. Infection of such bronchitis and things scant infections, um, uh, fracture of the bone after bone pain is very important. 
with the passage of time causes the yellowness of this jaundice can be evolved. To so detail of what is the Horner syndrome, once again, it's due to the pen cause tumor. This is very important viva question or MCQ questions. What is Horner T syndrome? Farmer syndromes are called pen cause tumors and the same symptoms of her drooping or weakness of the one eyelid, reduce or absent sweating, even the dryness of the mouth due to saliva on the same side of the face, sometimes causes shoulder pains. This is due to superior vena cava blockage by the tumors, superior vena cava syndromes. Paraneoplastic stone we have discussed in detail due to excretion of the hormones. Now the staging is very important. Therapeutic way, on the basis of therapeutics, the staging is depend on the size of the tumor. It is uh, shown in the T, like uh, uh, for the T, and uh, T means size of the tumors. N, that is the lymph node. And then is the M is the metastasis. T0, when there uh, there is no evidence of the primary tumor. Then the T1, when the size is less than 3 centimeter, not reach the pleura. T2, again, can be divided into T2A and P. The tumor has one or more larger than three centimeter cross, but not larger than the centimeter. And the, but the bronchus in all T3, the tumor has one or more. There may be single tumor or there may be multiple tumors. Larger than the seven tumor, but they involve the chest wall. And uh, the uh, T4, when the size, cancer size, has one or more a tumor, of any size growth in the distal spaces away from the, the lung. Same in the lymph node and zero, not, no lymph node involved and one the tumor spreads to the uh, local lymph nodes of the bronchus and to the cancer has spread to the lymph node around the cornea and mediastine and away from the pilar lymph nodes. N3, the tissue spreads to the lymph node near the color bone and either side of this one cell. Uh, M size, uh, M2 metastasis, zero when there's no metastasis. M2A, when the cancer has spread to the other lungs, cancers are found in the fluids. M one B cancer has spread to the distance layer away from the involving the lymph other organs. Diagnosis is very important. History is very important. Clinical examination is very important. You ask the history comprises all the signs, symptoms we discuss about the sputum, sleeping pattern, cough pattern, amount of the sputum, and all these things. Take the complete history um, after the history, certain early investigation, blood complete examination. Patients will be anemic and differential diagnosis, all these things. Blood chemistry, hormones level, you can are just, uh, helpful in the diagnosis of this one. Chest x ray is very important. CT scans um, and then the bronchial washing. We have I have shown in the last previous slides can help, especially the small cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma, but less helpful for the adenocarcinoma. CT guided biopsy is very important things that will help in the early diagnosis of this tumor. PET is another important diagnosis that can help the cancer in the lungs. This is the tap showing right lung, left lung, this one. 
so open biopsy is uh, cannot be performed however can be helpful but the fnc or fnab bronchoscopy and the thoracoscopy are important there is this was all about the tumors there are so many other tumors called metastatic tumors of the lungs as commercial as even there can be cancer as a carcinoma or they can be sarcomas pleural tumors are also important there. so this was all about the important this is the other role of immunochemistry is very important the differential diagnosis of small cell carcinoma and the non-small cell carcinoma and the and uh, differentiation of the uh, adenocarcinoma from the squamous cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma from the neuroendocrine tumors. So these immunochemistry important role plays important differential diagnosis between the malignant mesothelioma. Also important role of this one. The conclusion, what is the role of the conclusion? The conclusion is that we must, most lung tumors can be classified on the basis of light microscopy. We can uh, diagnose early on the, if the patient approaches to the clinical site, whenever this is advice, all the patients, whenever you feel some blood in the sputum or whenever you feel some wet loss or, and you are smoker and you are about 60s, definitely, go to the your doctors and uh, for the therapeutic we immunochemistry is very important the classification and the early the diagnosis better the prognosis late the diagnosis poor the prognosis these are the different things that is very important for this one so thank you very much uh, let's see what are the different mcq questions and if you have any question, you can ask the question. Thank you so much.